If you're an investor that doesn't like individual stocks, maybe you find them too risky, maybe you don't want to spend time researching and instead you prefer ETFs, or you just love your passive income coming in in the form of dividends, then this video is for you. Here are the best four high dividend yield ETFs. The first one is an ETF that aims for a high monthly dividend income and it does this by investing into the S&P 500. But it doesn't just do this it actually employs a strategic call option strategy. This is called the NEOS S&P 500 High Income ETF, ticker symbol SPYI. This one does have an incredibly high dividend yield, 12.12%, which may make it very attractive to those dividend investors that are really seeking to actually get a regular dividend income from their investment portfolio. But we'll dive into that in just a minute because this ETF only started very, very recently, which means we don't have an awful lot of data. We can't really, we don't really know if we can trust this to regularly increase the dividends and not just cut them. But we'll look into all that in just a minute. Now with these sort of ETFs, whereby they're not just passively tracking an, an index, they are actually utilizing um, a call option strategy. There are some particular pros and cons, rewards and risks that investors should be aware of. The obvious benefit is just the income generation. Typically speaking, these covered call ETFs and option-based ETFs tend to be able to produce a higher dividend yield than just uh, traditional ETFs. However, these covered call ETFs do also cap the upside potential if the underlying stocks that that ETF is following actually rise significantly. You can see the holdings and the allocation on the screen now, and it looks a lot like any other S&P 500 ETF. You know, you have Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, all of these companies as the biggest holdings uh, by weighting, like we tend to see of any S&P 500 ETF. But remember, this isn't a normal S&P 500 ETF, because the difference is, is that this one is implementing a data-driven call option strategy. Now, I'm just going to quickly look at the dividend scorecard and other pieces of dividend information that we must know about this ETF. But just before that, if you want to try this platform, Seeking Alpha Premium, you can do so using my link in the description. Clicking that link will actually get you a seven-day free trial. So try it out, see if you think it's valuable before you buy. And then if you want to buy it, you'll get a $50 coupon off. So I'm seeing this ETF's dividend grade coming out as an A+. That looks pretty good, but let's just further dive into this a little bit. So dividend summary, like we said, 12.12%. That is really, really high. And there's not many dividend ETFs or dividend companies out there that compete with that. But also look here, dividend growth one year. Five-year growth rate, no information. No information on a three-year, five-year or a 10-year. Why is that? Well, like I said, this is very, very new. I believe it only started in 2022. So we don't really have that proof yet. But we'll, we'll just see here as well, it is a monthly dividend paying ETF. Those investors that are looking to receive regular passive income on a month by month basis, you know, this could be one that you want to look into. We'll take a look at the dividend growth, but we can't really see very much because it's so new, but they did actually grow their dividend between 2022 and 2023. So if this continues, and it's very early days yet, but if this does continue, they could position themselves not only to be one of those ETFs that have a really high dividend yield, but also one of the dividend growth ETFs. Not saying that's going to happen, we need to wait and see, but so far they have increased it, at least that's one year in the back. So now let's just take a look at how this ETF has actually been performing compared to the S&P 500. We know that it is basically an S&P 500 ETF, but not in the normal sense, it actually has this call option strategy. So we would expect it to kind of have similar returns, maybe. Well, actually, over the last one year, it has significantly underperformed the index. Uh, returning investors just under 4%, whereas if they just got themselves a normal S&P 500 ETF, um, maybe like VU, they would have actually received nearly 21%. The next one on our list today is SCHD. Now, this is one of the most popular ETFs among dividend investors, I would say, apart from maybe one more that I can think of, but this is a very, very popular dividend ETF for good reason, I think. This ETF is tracking the Dow Jones Dividend 100 Index. So this is including companies that you have heard about, I have heard about, the likes of Pepsi and Coca-Cola, for example. What I will say about this one, which is very different to the last one we looked at, and that is that this ETF is way more attractive and way more appropriate for those dividend investors that do care about a decent dividend yield, but they are maybe more focused on having a safe dividend. What I mean by that is one that is not just going to be cut at any minute, 
one that actually may be able to grow their dividends year over year. And that is what this ETF is actually offering investors. And we'll look at the dividend growth in just a second, but it, this ETF is actually selecting stocks based on criteria that not only focuses on dividend yield, but also on dividend sustainability. Before stocks are allowed to enter this ETF, they are evaluated on factors like financial health, company size, and so on. So it does take the companies that it puts into this ETF quite seriously. It's important to remember that whilst a high dividend yield may be really shiny and really nice, it may not actually be sustainable. So it's probably better off for dividend investors to actually focus on the stability of the dividend and the ability of the ETF or the stock, whatever, to actually grow those dividends over time. Looking at the holdings now, they look very different from the last ETF we looked at. We are not seeing those tech stocks. We're not seeing the same, um, we're not seeing a duplication of the S&P 500. That is not what's happening here. It's not tracking the S&P 500. What we are seeing is those US companies that tend to pay a higher than average dividend yield. And because of the sort of stocks that actually do that, we are seeing that being reflected in the sector breakdown with the biggest sector exposure actually being in industrials and then healthcare, then financials. We're not really seeing the tech sector um, being reflected here at all. And this may mean, which we'll look at in just a second, that the stock price, the stock itself is not actually seeing that much growth. So is a hard balance, but we'll take a look at that in just a second. Back to the dividends. Let's have a look at the dividend scorecard. Being rated an A+, plus, that looks good. Dividend yield, a B. Dividend growth rate, a D+, plus. that's not that great, but dividend growth rate for a five-year period, B+, plus. that's really good. Consecutive years of dividend growth, A+, plus, 12 years. And if we scroll down, we can see that here as well. That's really, really good. That means that this ETF has been consistently growing the dividends every single year, for 12 years. Like we said, that means for dividend investors, they don't have to fret that, you know, whilst they're getting this really high dividend yield right now, next month, next year, it may be completely cut. And if you're an investor into this ETF, you are going to get paid on a quarterly basis. So four times a year. Comparing SCHD to the S&P 500 over the last one year time period, underperforming the index. And actually, if you started investing one year ago and you pulled all of your money out right now, you would have actually lost money. But let's just expand to a three year period, a bit better, but still underperforming the index. A five year period, again, better, still underperforming the index. A 10 year period, we are seeing a similar thing here. So basically what, what we're seeing is that you're getting a nice amount of dividends from this, but you're not getting that growth as much as you would if you just put your money into an S&P 500 ETF. But it's a completely different strategy. Some people are really motivated and really enjoy dividends. And I think the most important thing is do what motivates you because that's what's gonna keep you invested. And time in the market, is way more important than trying to time the market. The next ETF on our list is paying investors a higher dividend yield than what we just saw from SCHD's dividend of 3.48%. And that is JEPI, J-E-P-I. And like we saw with S-P-Y-I, these ticker symbols are getting very confusing, JEPI is also combining um, option selling with investments into US large cap stocks. I guess the whole strategy of this ETF is actually to generate income and offer a good passive income to those investors whilst potentially offering less volatility compared to the broader market. And we can see this reflected within the holdings. Although this is not exactly identical to the likes of VU and S&P 500 ETF, there are definitely differences. There are a lot of similarities too. We are seeing uh, Microsoft, Amazon, Visa, Adobe, uh, MasterCard, these companies that we also see in a high proportion within the S&P 500 ETFs. The dividend yield of JEPI is currently 8.44%, which is a very, very good dividend. It's not quite as high as ones that we've already seen on this list, but 8.44%. Very, very good indeed. Zero years of dividend growth. That may be a little bit concerning. We'll have a look at that in just a second. And also dividend frequency monthly. So every single month, if you invest into this company, you will get paid out a dividend. Let's have a look at what's going on with this dividend growth here. So what we can see, we'll expand this to as much data as we can get. Here we are. Um, we, what we can see is actually the dividends have been a little bit all over the place. There was an increase between 2020 and 2021, and then another increase, but then it's fallen. So maybe you can't rely on the dividend actually increasing every single year. JEPI has underperformed the index over the last one year. Three years, a similar thing, underperformed the index, actually doing quite badly. Five-year period, 
doing much better, but still way underperforming the index, but you are getting those dividends at 8.44% at the moment, which may lure investors in. Personally, for me, I wouldn't be investing into this just because my primary focus right now isn't on high dividends. I would rather have a dividend company that has consecutively been able to grow their dividends, or I would just much rather have a growth stock at the moment. But I know a lot of dividend investors absolutely love Jeppy and some of the other ones we've looked at so far on our list today. Let me know if you are one of those in the comments below. And our final one to balance this out is another ETF that not only pays a dividend, but they also care about dividend stability. And that is VIG, Vanguard's Dividend Appreciation ETF. This focuses on companies on stocks that have been able to consistently grow their dividends over time, but it does allow a potential blend of income and capital appreciation. Looking at the holdings, we can see the likes of Microsoft, Apple, JP Morgan, Visa, MasterCard. These are the US large cap stocks that we see in the S&P 500. However, all of these also pay a dividend. Bear in mind the likes of Apple, Microsoft, you know, some others on this list, they don't pay a very high dividend at all. Some of the smallest dividends out there, but what they do also see is capital appreciation. So let's take a look here. Dividend yield 1.9%. So it doesn't even compete with the likes of Jeppy at 8.44, with the likes of SCHD, with the likes of SYPI, SPYI, the first one. These ticker symbols are really hard to keep up with whilst recording. But what it does do is offer you a dividend growth of 10 years, paying quarterly, so four times a year. And let's just take a look at the dividend growth so we can see it laid out here. Look, you can see here that pretty much just increases, 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 offering dividend investors that stability. And I expect that the capital appreciation and the performance of VIG compared to the others that we've looked at is way better. But let's just take a look. VIG has returned 9.38% over the last one year period, underperforming the S&P 500. Why is that? Well, it's because VIG doesn't actually have some of those AI based, those high growth tech stocks in it that don't pay a dividend. And because of that, it's missed out on a lot of growth because we know that over 2023, those growth AI based stocks have done incredibly incredibly, incredibly well. Over a three year period, 17.93% again underperforming, uh, five year period, 69.47% underperforming, and a 10 year period, 127.35% underperforming. However, what you can see is that this ETF is way closer to the performance of the S&P 500 than the others that we've looked at. But the dividend yield is just not as high. Remember, if you want a seven day free trial plus money off on Seeking Alpha Premium, use the link in the description below. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts on all the ETFs that we discussed in this video. Stay tuned for the next video, but until then, keep analyzing, keep investing, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.